All right, so as we have understood the simplest form of round robin scheduling algorithm, now let's understand a little complicated with one more question, though this is not a gate question, but in itself is a very good because each and every process is arriving at a different time. So this will make you a good idea how you actually have to create the ready queue. So let's start. We have the time quantum two. We have six process. So let me just give them the P's to make it P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and P6. We have their respective arrival time and then we have the burst time. So here I'm maintaining the ready queue. And this time I think we will need more space. So you keep more space and here I'm making my CPU scheduling with the, on the Gantt chart. So here is the time scale. So at the time zero. Now you see we have to always look at the arrival time and then look at the time quantum. So at time zero we just have one process, no other process. So P1 is available in the ready queue at time zero. So we should do P1 on the Gantt chart or on the CPU at time zero quantum is two. So we should do it for the two quantum or for the two burst. Now important to understand is one thing P1 we need four bursts. So that means it is not going to get finished in one burst. That means P1 will go back in the ready queue. Secondly, because all the processes are not available at the same time. So in the meanwhile, you are executing any process there is a probability that in this duration, when P1 is actually executing on CPU, some other process are actually arriving in your ready queue. And that is exactly what is happening here. At time 0, we had P1. Now, at time 1, we have P2. At time 2, we have P3. So, we, we will update ready queue. And that is the most important and the most critical part of round robin scheduling. That you have to... Keep in mind, you have to be like vigilant all the time, right? That you need to see there, oh, new process is coming. Okay, fine, P2, you come in the ready queue. Oh, P3 is also coming, all right. P3, you also come into the ready queue. So we started, when we started, it was only just one process and we got it scheduled here. By the time it finished its first quantum, we have got two more process in the ready queue. That is the most important thing. I hope you're getting my point. And now, once we have got the other process in the ready queue already and we also know that P1 has not finished yet, it also supposed to go back to the ready queue. Correct? So I will place my P1 again at the end of the ready queue as you saw in the last example. Every time a process finished its quantum, it needs more burst, it go at the end of the ready queue. Not anywhere beginning or in between, at the end of it. So it got its place. Now we can see who is next in the queue. This is a queue. You all understand what is a queue. First in, first out. Last in, last out. So whoever is entering the first will come out first. So now it's P2 whose turn is coming. And yes, of course, every time just maintain the difference. What is left over now? P2 needs six first. We are giving two at a time. So we have given two plus two, four. P2 got finished, okay, at this finished means not terminated, but for one quantum it got finished. Now by the time 2 to 4, is there any other process coming in? Oh yes, we have P4 coming 3, P5 coming at 4, so place them. So it comes P4, here it comes P5. So we have P4 and P5 in the queue and because P2 also needs further burst, so it also goes back, you can say like this. I mean, initially I'm doing arrow like this for your understanding. Later on, you will be smart enough to understand just like that. Right? So now who is next in the queue? P3 is the next. So whenever you're taking a process, at that time only cut it off so that you don't forget that you have given it already a chance. So now P3. So P3 also will be given single burst. So 4, two, four plus 2 is 6. And so by this time it had become 4, it had become 1. In between 4 to 6 you check do you have any other process to come. So yes at time 5 we have P6. So first P6 will be coming. So yeah, now you understand it like this. Jab ye process run ho tha, jab P3 run ho tha, 4 to 6 burst ke liye. Us duration mein ek or process ne entry maari ready queue mein that is P6. So wo pahle aake bad gaya. Now it needs a burst. So it will go. Okay, now I also need a burst. So it is going simply. That's it. Okay. Now, now 
important to understand is every other process have already come into the ready queue that is important so ab hame bar bar arrival time dekhne ki zarurat nahi hai ki koi aur process queue mein aa raha hai ya nahi aa raha we just have to keep one thing in mind that if a process after given a time quantum is still remained to get executed then we have to keep it back into the ready queue otherwise it got terminated that's it so next to execute is p1 P1. How much it needs? Just one quantum. So six plus two, that is eight, and it becomes zero. Okay, and uh, yeah, right. So this is how. Now P1 is totally finished. Everyone, P1 is totally finished. It does not require any burst. So it got strike off. And now we need P4 to get executed. So P4. How much burst it require? P4 require two burst. So that is that's it. It's given a chance. It's given a chance, and it eight plus two. 10 and it got terminated it will not go back into the ready queue it will not go back we got it got terminated in its very first quantum right the next process to execute is p5 right 10 plus 2 12 because it needs five more five more units so we keeping it in the ready queue Next is P two. Cut it. Keep it. P two needs how much? Four. We are giving two at a time, so fourteen. So it will go back at the end of it. Correct. Correct. Now make this also two. Five is also deducted. So that is actually very important. Otherwise, if we if we lose that point, we will be confused. Now the P six. P six get a chance. So P six needs five burst, and it's given for the first time. So four plus two is sixteen, and it becomes three because it needs more. So I'm writing P six again. Next to be executed, I'm continuing my Gantt chart right here. Next, I'm continuing it with P three. P three, how much do you need? It needs only one burst. Now, everyone, this is important to understand. It needs just one burst, which does not imply that you give the full time quantum. Which implies that you give the time which is required by the process. Okay, if it is less than a time quantum time, you give it only the required one. So we need only one verse. So sixteen plus one, seventeen, and P three got finished totally finished and it becomes zero. All right, you need not to keep it back in the queue. Next process to be executed is P five from the ready queue. So P five, how much you need? It needs five. I'm giving two. Seventeen plus two is nineteen. So this becomes. Three and P five needs for the space. Now I'm continuing with my ready queue from here. After P six, whose turn is P five? Okay. But next to be executed is P two. P two needs how much? It needs two quantum. Nineteen plus two twenty one. It got finished. It got finished and it got finished. That's it. P two finished completely. Now the next to be executed is P six. Give a chance to P six. P six. How much do you need? It needs three. We give one quantum. Twenty one plus two, twenty three. It becomes one, and you get a chance again after P five. So this is continued in the ready queue form, right? Next is P five. P five. How much it needs? It needs three bars. We are giving two, so twenty five. It becomes one. So it comes again because it needs further more, right? Right. Now next to come is P six, P six, twenty five, and how much is needed? Just one bus. So twenty five plus one, twenty six. Got finished, got finished, and got finished. Now you see here each and every other process have been finished except the P five. So that is the only one in the ready queue. So that makes you are going absolutely correct in your direction. Now P five needs how much bus? It needs just one. So you finish by writing it P five. And that needs one bus, so that becomes, and it is also finished. So this is exactly how the processes are supposed to be executed with the help of round robin. So now here, the important to understand is that once a P1 got finished with its time quantum, we are taking P2, but P1 is actually not totally finished; it's not terminated. So this is this point, this point between P1 and P2. This point is nothing but then the context switch. You all understand. We have discussed it so many times in our other algorithms also. So every time a process is going back, 
in the ready queue and the new process is coming from the ready queue that simply means we are trying to store the PCB, the uh, context of a process which is the older process and we are trying to load the context of the new process. I mean there's two jobs in one name is nothing but then the context switch. <sighs> Alright, I hope uh, the round of it will go them in the very simplest form is understood to everyone. I'll come up again in the next video where we are going to solve some more previous year gate questions asked from round robin scheduling algorithm. Till then you take care and bye bye.